long as we make the show We can be the best or we can be the worst We can be the best thing you ever heard With the motor singing and the grandstands ringing It's hard to put it all in words But this is how we ride, this is how we do Tossing her in sideways, living the life, living the ride, high side, winning to die. Cross her up on the cushion, crossing the line. Caught some drama and some bullshit they didn't like. And if they don't like the mood, then we're ready to fly. This is how we ride, this is how we do. with the hair boy i love coming out with this hair look at this put the little fluff in it like i was told put the chicken wings of flapping in the air you know the, the 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 muscle the lack of it is so interesting the things that are happening today we have so many things that have occurred here recently um both in the in the actual world happening right now, of course, Kyle Larson's IndyCar test. We're going to give you some live uh, data from uh, the, the test that is happening right now, potentially, I think, actually. Let me see. Uh, Kyle Larson is, is on the racetrack in an IndyCar turning laps right now. Uh, it was a three-hour test session, I do believe. Um, and there is a hour left. We're going to actually, he is on the track right now. Just click the lap off going, um, because his time just changed on the, the situation. We'll see if, uh, it, it clicks off a, a T T one cause it's, it, it's got like a data interface, but we do have to start with Kyle because I, I, I guess, I guess he is effing or FNGing with us. Because yesterday we did document how we see the situation right here where on the trophy of the High Limit Sprint Car Series, it was a eye missing. Somebody made a, 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 a huge mistake. Somebody got an... Once again, I can't believe it. Somebody got an order from Kyle Larson to do his newly created the, the series championship, that, that championship that Dell Jr. was just at and attended and been talking to. And we're on the heels of them trying to put on this perfection year to try to potentially accomplish taking over the sprint car scene next year or, or, or make their way in that direction. And somebody misspelled a word. We didn't like... You know, there's a little curve in, in, in this straight line that was supposed to be straight, you know, and it wasn't. But somebody actually read, looked at, quality controlled, and approved a Kyle Larson championship trophy for this new series with it without an eye. Somebody actually had to type that in, read it, and press print. But... I think Kyle's just, I, I think he may have did this on purpose. Because looky here. Look what he put on his damn Twitter. Look at this. Either God is real 
or or he people know how to use Photoshop because this is on Kyle Larson's Twitter where he was talking about uh you know being a, a champion and all this and it is 100% fixed the the i in 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 team is there we see it now on both trophies have an eye. The NG has been moved over. Now, I can do this post-editing. I could fix this. Uh, so, more than likely, this is Photoshopped. But more than likely, people are being put in positions not because of their skill, but because of their nepotism. And for somebody to make a... a, a, a and what I mean by that is for somebody to make a blunderous mistake like this, they, there's no way they are leading their industry. More than like, and there's no way they took it. This is how you would make a mistake on a buddy's um, order. You know, it's not a big deal if I mess it up. Who cares? This is not like, I'm the best. I have to provide the best. This is a, a, a sign of a buddy making a mistake. Who got the the gig? Who got the who got the show? That's what's happening here. Nepotism once again. Who got the contract to do these trophies? I wouldn't be surprised. And then this, you know, kind of amplifies that thought because this is trying to cover up for the buddy's mistake. That's what I would see. We did have some interesting comments in the comment section of this uh, photo, actually. Because at this point, people were doubting reality. They had no idea if this was real or if the other one was the real actual photo. You know, they, they just didn't know. They didn't know what was actually happening. So you scroll down here, and some people were confused, thinking I was just hating on him for winning his championship, which was not the case. But somebody actually did come down here and show... Uh, a picture of the trophy on a mantle where it, it had the NG, the I is missing. Um, And then we scroll down even more um, where Justin Snyder personnel with uh, Port Royal said it was definitely Photoshopped. They fixed it for the, for the post on his page. They didn't replace the trophy of minutes. Uh, a little confusion with Coney Ernest, who put the comment in there is like from a picture of Flo, not confused. Um, and then Justin basically reiterated that he was trying to say that the the real trophy is wrong. Um, it's just it's just funny how this was was trying to be uh, made up, and then of course people are just in here for some reason posting Steve Harvey gifs and, and technically just bitching. Uh, and, you know, talking about, I don't think it's about the money. Oh, my God. Back back to this argument. But regardless, there are good things happening in Kyle Larson's life besides trying to hide up Buddy's mistakes on their trophies. This is happening right now, ladies and gentlemen. So, Larson set to t turn his first laps Thursday at IMS, and this is uh, driver orientation. Um... Let's see here. Did not read. Uh, finishing with 15 laps. So it says the rookie orientation uh, program. I'll just read it while we put the picture. Well, I can't do that. The rookie orientation program consists of three speed phases. Gradually introducing first year 500 drivers to the high speeds and unique nature of the rectangular low banked 2.5 mile oval. Drivers must start with 10 laps between 205 and 210 miles per hour following with 15 laps of 210 to 215 and finishing with 15 laps faster than 215 miles per hour. So this is the live timing for Kyle Larson. And it looks like, ladies and gentlemen, we are. it is green on the track. There is an hour remaining in the session, but it don't look like Kyle is falling off the block. And I think that he's going to, really shock some people. I think IndyCar racing, I think asphalt racing in general lacks talent because of the monetary um, advantage, advantages that you can have on asphalt. A car can literally drive around the track. You can ride in those cars. If the car is good enough, you can win. If the car is really good enough in dirt, you still got to outdrive a bunch of badasses who are 
right there with you. And asphalt, there's not a lot of money put into it by regular people. There's a few people who put a ton of money into it, and they can buy an advantage on the racetrack. And I think that the talent of dirt racing and the talent of short track racing in America for the last 20, 30 years has been pursuing a NASCAR career. If you're a dirt guy and that NASCAR route don't go, you go to World of Outlaws or something, USAC, something like that, like a CV or, or somebody else. You 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 do not the, the talent of America is not going to IndyCar racing. Uh, it used to, um, but that all switched when you know a five year old's dream was to go to Indy. He didn't have the money or a last name, and he went to the South and started running stock cars. And since then, every dirt track racer in the world wants to be Co Trickle. I mean Jeff Gordon. Sorry, wrong person. But and and Kyle's a Jeff Gordon part two. Of course, he he drove the forty two car. Uh, for Chip Ganassi, not the 24 for Hendrick, although 24 is 42, forwards and backwards, murder red rum, 424, the area code to Hollywood. Unbelievable how amazing this was. So he was just in the pit, so he's now rolling out onto the track. Um, And we got some pretty good data here, you know, 220, 218, 219, 219. I think he's really going to do something special because I just don't think uh, that the talent is in Indy, Indy, Indy car racing. I, I just don't think it is. I think there's some people who have mastered the craft, but I think if there was a lot more talent going to Indy car racing, that more people would master that craft a little bit better than the ones currently attempting to. I just think that the talent of the situation is not attempting to uh, do that. So it's a little weird to we uh, to kind of read this map. 220 BT 1TS LT 1TS. You see these letters on the screen. I'm just looking at this for the first time with you. Uh, it looks like that first time is the speed located there at the start finish line. I would I would guess to 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 think. The second time would be uh, entering turn one, the trap one potentially T T3 TS. I would I would assume be the trap entering turn three. Uh, but then you got the LT3 TS. Kind of interesting to read this, but you do have this nice key over here. Uh, BLS is best lap speed. BLT is best lap time. Uh, and this is on racecontrol.indycar.com, these times that I'm looking at. So you can go monitor it for yourself. Um, BLN, best lap number. NTS, best no toe lap speed. L LT, oh, we're actually got. On the track action, just clicked off another barrier. Went 220 across the board. Kyle Larson just went 220 across the board. So best lap speed, best last time, lap time are these two th uh, uh, things. The T1 and the T3 do represent turn one and turn three. So BLS best lap speed is 216, but I think he's about to bust that. Because those all look good on the trap speeds. And I believe that's what that actually is. Because it's showing trap speeds entering there. So right now, best lap speeds are 216 for Kyle. He just had to get above 215. 217 for Kyle Larson. This is live tracking. I can't believe that this is happening. This is like the the the, the advanced version of, of race monitor. Uh, but a 217 lap just clicked off by Kyle Larson. And his speeds are already up for lap number two. You see, these are live timing and scorings uh, entering one and two. So that was the best lap. So that's why it's B. I'm assuming best lap. And then I would assume that uh, the LT is the last lap turned. So best lap, he just clicked off. That was just 220. It's at 221 now. We'll see this turn three. Actually, it looks like he's pitting. Or, or we just went gray. Did he hopefully did not wreck or something? I didn't see the time change, and then all of a sudden, um, it went gray. So that would be bad if there was a wreck or something like that. But maybe he just got off of the speed. We'll see. But it looks like, uh, hopefully, that will show a pit symbol here in a minute. And that's why it went gray, because he went to the pitting area. Um, But... Looks good. I mean, like it said over here in the requirements, we'll read it again. Um, where's that? Right there, rookie rookie orientation, finishing with 15 laps faster than 215. So he was just at 216. He's already up to 220. 
and uh, was on pace for a 221 lap, it looked like, before he backed it off. Um, He did just have a last turn lap, so that, ju that just changed again. So kind of confusing here. I assumed when it was lit, lit up purple that that was the driver on the track actually uh, turning laps. Um, or maybe he just turned his fastest lap. So I believe he might be out there right now. We'll see if these values change. Um, once again, I've never actually watched one of these IndyCar deals. I'm assuming that's going to be a, a lot of the same story for people coming up in this next year with Kyle's first attempt. Uh, I, I Like I said, I think they're going to get shocked. I think they're going to get shocked. I, I, I mean... If you had 25 or 30 of the best dirt racers in the world, you know, getting time and getting sim and getting all this stuff, they would be right up there shocking them with them. Uh, I agree. I would also possibly agree that a majority of the NASCAR roster with decent time in IndyCar racing could do well because I think a lot of the talent has went to NASCAR racing over the last 20, 30 years. Um, we saw how good Kurt Busch did, but I would say uh, that Kyle Larson is elite in his ability. Yeah, this, this value just changed. So he is still on the track if this is a live track because I just went from 220 to 2187. And he has to turn 15 laps above that 215. Uh, right now sitting at a 217. Um, and to give you an idea of the speeds that that is, this is uh, pole qualifying from yesterday or <laughs> this year, uh, the last race. Um and obviously, speed is a little bit different. Uh, you got to turn four laps straight uh, to get that average in total time. Uh, but these are where the actual speeds to qualify for the race are at. Uh, this is actually 82 entries that signed up to attempt. And you could see the difference there. Not a lot. One, one mile per hour difference, basically, uh, between or not even one mile per hour on pole day, at least. Uh, well, that's to actually get on the pole, but um, one and a half, two miles per hour, maybe making the difference here. Not even that. This is uh, extremely tight. So 231 to 234, the difference between the guys going home and the guys on the pole winning the race. So a couple mile per hour difference is is a big deal. And, and, and the margin is thin. The margin is definitely thin. Uh... Another thing to look at on here is we have had 59 laps turned. So Kyle's closing in on 60 total laps around the track. And once again, those values have changed. So he is still out there clicking off laps in the 220 mile per hour range, it looks like. And uh, I'm, I'm assuming that the car, and he is in the pits now. You see the pit uh, number line or pit little icon on the screen. So, obviously, I didn't think, or anyone with understanding of, of driver ability, I didn't think that Kyle would have any issue at all uh, passing this test. Obviously, he's not running 233, 34, 31, 30 out there. I, I would assume there's a difference in feel and a difference in ability to go up by 12 or 13 miles per hour from where he's at right now. But anybody with understanding of how the uh, the classes of racers have came up through America and where they have gone, where the talent has dispersed, uh, knows that, you know, Kyle Larson has dispersed onto all those levels and kicked all their asses. And, 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 and even though there's guys out there potentially on a Larson level in the talent department, he is possibly the greatest example to get the opportunities allotted to him. And this opportunity, I think everyone at IndyCar should be shaking in their boots. You ha you actually have a driver from dirt track racing, from NASC from the greatest stages of American motorsports in his p potential prime right now, coming over there and running the Indy 500. When's the last time that happened? Some people could say Tony Stewart, but Tony Stewart did Indy. Game was a little bit different back then. I would say that Kyle Larson to Tony Stewart's a couple levels in difference of driving ability. I would say Kyle Larson is two to three levels higher than a Tony Stewart. Um, what Kyle does on the dirt tracks, I, I mean, Tony Stewart did the same, same kind of dance, but Kyle Larson has perfected that dance and does it extremely well and better than Tony Stewart. So in my opinion... 
I don't know who couldn't want to see Larson win it. I think it would be cool. I know this is weird for me to be on board with the Larson situation, but I do think that this is a situation where IndyCar racing hasn't had the talent come. And, and I worry about them more than the dirt. At least when Kyle comes to the dirt, you know, he's technically a dirt racer. It's not like a NASCAR driver coming over uh, to try dirt. You know, if you do that, you get Kyle Busch's and late models and you get Chase Elliott's and stuff that just look embarrassing on the racetrack. Kyle's from here, though, so when he comes back, he makes it look easy. It's like riding a bike again, similar to how Tony Stewart went back to IndyCar racing and did that thing. This is a whole nother animal, though. Kyle Larson has no background in IndyCar racing. Yeah, open-wheel cars on dirt, but they're completely different with with rear-engine vehicles. And and this guy coming in here and and, and just it, to be to potentially kick their ass on their biggest stage is way more embarrassing for IndyCar racing, uh, for their respect and notoriety than Kyle Larson coming over and winning the Knoxville Nationals. Because anybody with any kind of understanding knows that, that he's a sprint car racer. That's who he is. So for him to w- win a sprint car race isn't a big deal. He's not an IndyCar racer. If he goes to IndyCar racing and kicks their ass, that's that that puts them back in their place that they have been ever since F1 and NASCAR and, and, and Indianapolis got together and destroyed the whole open-wheel scene of America uh, to protect the F1 uh, global dom- dominance of open-wheel racing. But regardless, that is an interesting situation uh, Kyle Larson in the pits looks like he's good on his his times here. He's already in the two twenties, two twenty one, six second, uh, six seconds or six mile per hour, six miles per hour faster than needed to uh, qualify to be able to go for the Indy five hundred. So good news there for all you stupid ass Larsonites. But Kyle is a little up in age, and Kyle is from California. And Kyle, according to some, might be the problem in motorsports. Might be the problem in in motorsports. Before we get that far, we'll we'll read some chat reaction on uh, the situation with uh, Kyle going to run this entire deal. Hold on, let's see here. Get y'all up here. Let's see y'all see y'all's reaction on my thoughts and, and theories of of Kyle and this Indy 500 deal. Uh, it's all about the money. Kyle Larson has a huge fan base, so if they put him in Indy, those fans will watch and go to Indy car races. Um, so Kyle is a cash cow. Yes, you have to to lift on the straights and be on the gas before the corner to lock the differential. Okay. Um. I just know NHRA, those cars could be detuned for rookie qualifying. That's true. Um, let's go back up here. Maybe we'll get up here. Larson Knights Unite. All right, here, here we go. Uh, may, make Kyle FaceTime you with it. Okay, the oh, we're talking about the trophy up here. Um, Indy 500 is the best spectacle in auto sports and fastest and most dangerous. We are, uh, I don't know who watched the 22 version of the Indy 500, we are extremely lucky that that tire that flew off into the air did not land in the grandstands. Or motorsports might have potentially got shut down. Some of y'all don't know it. The Otis, or previously, the Otis sanctioning body of the United States of America was AAA. The automotive insurance company used to run American motorsports, AAA, or, or your roadside assistance, whatever. They got out of it because of a big wreck. I believe it was in Le Mans where, or a car wrecked and flew off into the grandstand. I think it was like 60 people got killed in the whole ordeal. This back in the 40s or 50s or something like that. And they pulled out of the sport. They got out of racing completely. That's when USAC, I believe, was formulated. But um, this situation that we had this year, if that tire flies off into that grandstands and peels and, and slices up on people for who knows how many, you know, say it's 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 people that this tire just slices people up with. And that's how dangerous a flying tire actually is. It it don't look so pretty. Um, It could have been a potential swing of motorsports in America. They might have said, we can't have this. You know, what what, what would have been the repercussions? Now you got to have a 100-foot fence? What what are you going to do? I mean, some things are, are dangerous, but... 
regardless, it is pretty damn dangerous. That's for sure. Best lap in the 2023 Indy was 39.8 uh, with the toe. Did you do? Finally, Larson won't be on dirt anymore. Indy is more time required by the driver. They're training all the time and in the gym and at the race shop and all the time to make the cut to F1. Uh, somebody said, good morning, Lizzo. Well, good morning to you, too. New Garden will own Kyle, somebody said. I just don't think so. I don't think that the talent, I don't, once again, just how I say, you know, NASCAR drivers are bought and paid for, um, show, they've all bought their way onto the starting lineups. There's a very few amount of NASCAR drivers who actually kicked everyone's ass on the way to that level. Most of the time, it's just money getting you. I mean, how did Haley Deegan advance from trucks to Xfinity? Money, right? Um, Danica Patrick advanced through NASCAR to the cup level. Money, right? Opportunity, right? Hype, whatever y'all want to call it. And I call them a bunch of paper champions because they're only racing against competition that is hand-selected through the money cycle. So the race there is not as hard because there's only a few guys on the level of a Kyle Larson up there, maybe two or three, driving talent-wise. And then, you know, when you get to the dirt levels, the lower cost things of the world, you have more people with talent racing because of the affordability aspect. So there's a, a deeper roster of people and, and with more, more people to select from, there's more talent involved. Now, IndyCar is in the same aspect as the NASCAR Cup Series. There's a lot of people that are bought and paid for to be there. Most of the competition is. And what... What, what talent pool of America is trying to go be an IndyCar racer? I, I could think of plenty of people who spent money to go rent trucks and Xfinity and this and that and ARCA and K&N trying to be a NASCAR driver, but I can't think of too many people that I know with the high level of, of skill and talent in America that's trying to go be an IndyCar driver. So just how a paper champion can win a cup race because the car is better and they're not up against a lot of competition because nobody has the money to compete or play the game, I think with New Garden and a bunch of these indie car regulars, they're, they're 10 times more overrated. Now, Scott Dixon, there's a few in there that, you know, are, are legit, but I think especially when it comes to oval racing in America, which is what indie car racing is trying to be, obviously they do road courses and stuff, but I think when it comes to... Not only just oval, but the talent pool of America is not trying to go to IndyCar races, so they're not spending money on trying to go there. I know plenty of guys who would rather go be a world out once they once they couldn't get somewhere in a three million dollar inner ride in trucks, they're going to go back and be a dirt racer because it's something that they love doing and it's a little it's cheaper. After all, you know I think it was Rico Abreu saying for the one year it would take for him to run that truck again. He could have paid for six, seven years of World of Outlaw Sprint Car Racing up and down the road. So that's that's why I think New Gardens and some of these guys, maybe there are some good ones. We're going to find out. This, in my opinion, that's another thing. Kyle Larson is going in there to test them. We're, we're, we're going to find out how good they actually are. Because Kyle Larson, in my opinion, is the first driver with real, real talent to go into IndyCar Racing in a long, long time. In my opinion. In my opinion. That's just what I got to say. I think Kyle Busch was an overrated driver. I mean, he was good. But, obviously, the monetary situations that got them in NASCAR is real as well. So, how good were they? Were they just like Larson? Where there was a lot of guys that were just on the same skill level. They just didn't have the monetary funding to be able to do the same things. So, anyway. Kyle and Quali uh, Trim. One second to go. Let's see here. Uh, the talent in IndyCar at this present time is higher than it's been in the last two decades. Now, that may be true, Jordan, but in the last two decades, previous to IndyCar or open-wheel racing really hasn't had any talent in it for, for three decades or more. I mean, I'm just saying, they have household names from the 90s, but two decades is 2003, okay? 2003... Now, at that point, NASCAR had already took over the American racing scene, and IndyCar and CART were still trying to fight each other on who gets what. And maybe that's what NASCAR's doing to the sprint car scene. They, they've used Larson to come in here with the sprint car deal that was getting rising in popularity and breaking us up. I don't think that that's the case. It's potentiality. I'm not sure. 
I'm not sure. Somebody said Kyle's back on the track. Um, let's see here. I don't know if he is or not. We'll have to check the web. Um, ain't seen these uh, things change yet. But regardless, we got to move on. Because Kyle Larson is potentially an old fart. There is a developing situation, ladies and gentlemen, that I think a lot of people should know about. So Dominic Sells, he came onto Facebook the other day. Logan Spar even liked this. One of the greatest race car drivers in PA that no one knows about because he ain't got the money for four tens. But Dominic Selzy comes onto Facebook and makes a post that was highly popular, almost 2,000 likes. It said, just a PSA for kids coming into sprint cars on their way to becoming the next Kyle Larson. Everybody trying to kill themselves to be Kyle. With respect, please, it will get you further than anything else. I've seen more kids under 20 turning right or left on cars this year than ever in my life. It's ridiculous, and it's going to get someone killed. These aren't go-karts, these aren't micros, and you're probably not as good as you think you are. These cars are not toys. Don't treat them as such. I saw Nicole Signor, or how you know how sign or sign or, sign or leave. I don't know what that means, uh, but she did some undercover work on the trophy with Larson too. I saw that. I saw that. A lot of people commenting in here. A lot of support. Everything like that. And, and Dominic Selzy, you know, was kind of referencing a, a racing incident that happened over there in the west coast of the world. Uh, it was in the heat race of the fall nationals. And everyone was kind of pointing at this is what happened and this is what he's talking about. But it was at the beginning, even though we have a, a splice cut right there on the replay. Interesting how that's always showing up. But you see, I believe to the inside on the front row is Ashton Torgerson. And on the outside, I believe that is Gage Garcia in the Tarleton car. And here's what commences. A very bad wreck into turns one and two. And the Tarleton 21 is not looking too stout there. We'll give it one more little one more little replay here. It's always interesting to try to click the perfect second on these five and a half hour videos. But you had veterans in this race. I mean, you see Forsberg is there. Uh, a bunch of other guys. You had the two young guys on the front, though. And I guess a lot of people are saying that Ashton Torgerson just drove straight over the left front of the 21 car here in this situation. That's what people are saying. That doesn't mean it's true. Because I can look at this and say, oh, you know, he can make all the excuses in the world, I guess, and say, oh, well, he couldn't see out of the right wing sideboard. He left a lane. You could literally say Ashton Torgidson did leave a lane and maybe Garcia was a little lower on the track. I mean, Garcia is up next to the wall. Well, hold on. He did not leave a lane. Uh, Garcia is up next to the... I was trying to give Torgidson the benefit of the doubt here and say, well, he left him a lane. Uh, he could have held it. But unfortunately... Based on this replay, Garcia in the 21 car is all the way up on the wall. And there, when that contact's made, Ashton Torgerson's car was proceeding to go to the right or, and not leave a car length at all for the car on the outside of him. Now, obviously, these are two guys from micro racing, but a lot of people thought and spec. I mean, look at that. You could see Torgerson's car is already veering to the outside, and Garcia's right rear is right on the wall. There's a little gap in the wall there. But, I mean, he's on the wall. There's nowhere for Garcia to go here. This is, some people would say that was, a, if you had a hit on the car, hey, get that guy. That's how you would kind of do it. But anyways, car's destroyed. Andy Forsberg's like, I'm out of this shit. But, apparently... Apparently, I, I couldn't find a replay of this. They did not replay this situation. But apparently, the Andy Forsbergs of the world are potentially the problem. And the person who walked in and told the world that this is the truth is none other than Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil 
showed up and, and dropped a hammer on the on the racing world. And Dr. Phil came in and said, just a PSA for old, overweight guys still in sprint cars on their way to becoming the next washed-up wannabe. You're the past. Youth is the future. Might be time to hang up your helmet. Please, it will get your fur- you further, farther than anything else. I've seen more washed-up racers turn right or left on cars this year than ever in my life. It's ridiculous, and it's going to get someone killed. These aren't golf carts. They aren't mobility scooters, and you're probably not as good as you think you are. So Dr. Phil came into this and said this publicly uh, in response to Dominic Selzy's, actually it's Danny Torgerson, his father, but said this in response to Dominic Selzy, the father of Ashton. Um, and it did not, it has not go, gone over well. Obviously, this post right here was shared by Jamie Ball. Uh, shout out to the Knoxville regulars keeping it in with the plan here. Um, and this is just amazing that somebody would take such a stab back at someone else after an incident we just reviewed was completely on the drivers of the the driver of the seven cars fault and 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 the snow team and everything like that we all kind of guesstimate that that's kind of a give me this give me that ride potentially I don't know if that's a rental ride or not for a fact but it seems that way uh, I don't I think that everyone over there's good guys with the team but there's some people in there that are apparently behind a wreck that we just saw and see it as it's not young kids cutting noses off it is old farts out there um that are washed up and young kids are the future now recently i did say and i still agree that we need to put some kind of age limit on racing it's a maturity deal especially the 410s and 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 uh super late model divisions i don't think that kids should be in these race cars um, I think you should at least get a driver's license before you're allowed to get into these race cars. Not a permit, but an actual driver's license. Not only for the safety aspects and the wherewithal and the maturity aspects for the racing action on the track, but also for the respect of this sport. And you track promoters and promoters, if y'all want sprint car racing and, and super late mile racing to appeal and to be respected by natural, regular people in society that we need to be to be attracting the one thing that will kill the respect the one thing that will kill the respect for your race car is when or that super late model or that 410 sprint car the one thing that will kill the respect for that racing division is when a kid steps out of that race car in victory lane it is going to destroy the respect of your race car it's going to put it into that kitty league category that we are fighting right now because a lot of people believe that the sprint car and super late model stuff is is high school level divisions of racing where the only good drivers from these cars, it's just like high school. That's the only good ones graduate to the college, the ARCA, the truck, the next level. And that's why we stay stationary and stay below these other divisions of racing in the respect category. So to raise that respect, I think we shouldn't be allowing little kids in our premier divisions anymore. I also think that that would not only just help with the, you know, perspective of what we got going on as being professional, not kid-like, not high school-like, but also it would help with the on-track racing action and the respect aspect. We did have some interesting responses in this. Um, some people c- uh, couldn't, can't believe that the clown went there. Um, then they go to talking about the Chili Bowl deal where he came out of the car. Of course, that was a horrible situation around Ashton that I believe got him on to the Dr. Phil show. Um, was not a good situation that happened at the beginning of the year. That's where most people probably heard of his, of, of his name and of the driver. I believe he's still a rowdy energy driver. So keeping up with the clan on, uh, uh how they race on the track, um, you got to love Dominic Selzy. Everybody seems that this uh, to, to be a shot at Dominic Selzy. Uh, TJ Michael say, says, 
maybe I need to gain some weight and pop some kids out if it's good for winning 10 plus races a year, Dominic Selzy. <laughs> and uh, some getting a response, some just going completely off. Can't believe uh, Joshua Sutton right here said, I can't believe he is even saying this. I have the most respect for Dominic Selzy. After watching him race and then jump out of his car to make sure a fellow competitor was okay after a flip at the 360 Nationals. Heck, I even think he managed to beat the safety crew there, which is pretty much impossible at Knoxville anyway. So, a lot of respect for Dom. Uh, Kevin Olsen Jr. coming in here uh, saying, I like that he's talking shit when his kid literally fell out of a race car. Tyler Edwards says, click it or ticket with a little bit of a joke there. Um... Russ Hall said, I had to smack, Russ Hall, who is a pro sprint, sprint racer and winner at Knoxville, uh, said I had to smash at least two tenderloins and a frosty malt uh, before the feature to get my Knoxville wins. Um, Jamie Ball, always in it. And then an interesting comment from Lance DeWeese. And Lance DeWeese says, is he talking about Dominic Selzy? Because I guess he maybe thought he might have been talking about him. Lance DeWeese says, of course not Lance. I'm not old. I'm, and then Dominic follows it up. I'm not on my way to being washed up. I'm there. Okay, so more humor and comedy in this blatant uh, shot right back at Dominic Selzy trying to provide some friendly advice. Friendly advice not looking good. But I'll tell you what, it didn't look good, and it doesn't look good to try to be defending uh, this type of, of, of driving. I mean, I literally just went over it. Uh, and showed it, tried to potentially defend, uh, you know, because I get into these breakdown videos of wrecking like uh, Chase Randall and Bill Baylog earlier in the year at 34 Raceway. Very similar style look of a wreck. Chase Randall, obviously a young guy. You could have been in the same position as a Dominic Selzy saying, as a Bill Baylog saying young kids need to drive smarter with respect. In that situation, Chase Randall, in my opinion, didn't do anything wrong. He left enough room for Bill Baylog to catch his car and left enough room for him to race. Bill Baylog kind of came down the track into him that caused the initial contact. But in this situation, I can't say that. I cannot say that there was adequate room left on the top of the racetrack. You could see Torgerson's cars pointed towards the outside lane right now at this point of the video. It's going to fill the outside lane. It's going, he's aiming, for those who would think about racing just a little bit, He's aiming for the cushion already. He's taking that line. That's the move that was taken right here. Obviously, Silver Dollar Chico's hard to pass on. You got to make moves very quick, very fast. But that was just a move that was a little, little quick, a little too fast. And and to think that the driver of that 21 after a wreck like that could have gotten killed somehow. Could a bar come off of a car? Could a wing post, post came out while all that smashing in the cockpit area got through and, 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 and pierced somebody? Yeah, it's possible. It's a quarter-mile racetrack. You're not going to have, you know, big 120, 130-mile-per-hour wrecks that, you know, have hard impacts. But there's still, when you're smashing and bashing cars together and all the parts, you know, we just talked about Indy and a tire going into the stands. I mean, or missing the stands. This is a situation where they're on the playing field. They're close enough, whereas if when that car is smashing into another Anything's possible here. It hasn't happened in a long time. I don't think we've had any impelments in racing recently. But with all these parts and pieces, it's possible that even something at a low speed on the start of a race like this could kill somebody. So I just don't understand the response there. I think it was a bad play uh, in this entire situation um, to kind of go back at Dominic Selzy, somebody who is at least a little vocal. You know, we talk to Joe Von Schriltz all the time. And he's one of the only guys who will kind of say what he thinks out of that West Coast environment, kind of point out some of the issues that he sees. A lot of other people are scared to do that. Dominic Sells, he's one of those guys who isn't afraid to, to say what he thinks. He'll motherfuck you straight up. Dominic Sells, he was one of the first guys to try to whoop my ass. You know, obviously, we just had our issues here recently with the Torgan, Torgan's situation. But out of Dominic Sells, trying to whoop my ass, we had an exchange of a few words. It kind of got to a respect factor. So I, 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 I respect Dominic Sells, word. Just in my personal uh, interaction with him, even though we didn't dis uh, didn't agree at the time, it still was a respect a mutual respect situation that came out of it. And to come at somebody like Dominic in this way, everybody's in here in the comments. Dominic tells you, "I fucking love." This is something that is a problem. This is something that is an issue. And I've been trying to say it in racing that one of the biggest issues is saying I made the mistake, I messed up. It's it. it Think about it, guys. 
It's never, it's never the drivers, or it's never the crew chiefs, or it's never this, or it's never that. It's the, it's the GoPro on the car. That's what did it. Uh, no, no, no. It's the color green. No, no. It, oh, it's cause, it's cause Billy had chicken today for lunch, and, and he ate it in the hauler. Or, or no, it's because uh, Jim Bob brought a bag of peanuts earlier, but right before we pushed out for hot laps. That's why this happened. The lack of self accountability and saying I'm the reason. I'm the problem. Hell, I do it all the time. I, oh, uh, hell, I'm, I'm looking at my hair. I'm the problem. Look at my look at my hair. I'm over here just owning it, living life. Not us. Uh, 24, 365. We're just going with it. We're the problem. <laughs> you know? But I'm just saying. This is just a bad way of, of dealing with it. Let's look at the chat session. Uh, looks like we got a few chimed in with Larry here. Uh, let's see here. Larry... Uh, come on, Chaz. Age limit. Kyle was 410 sprints at 14 and crashing, and Jeff Gordon was 16. And the other side, Sammy Swindell is still racing and winning at at lower levels of uh, lever. Uh, I'm assuming it means lower levels of 410 racing. I think um, that even though you have these rarities that succeed at a young age, it's it, age. It's almost almost like drinking and driving. Like there are some people out there that I hate to say it that I know they can get drunk. And they can drive, and they can drive better than some of the sober people I see driving in California or Texas or any of these major cities. They drive like idiots, you know. But just because a few people can do it, there are people out there, the idiots already while they're sober, they get drunk, and then they go out there and they wreck everyone, and they they cause and they kill and they murder, and it's a very bad thing, and the alcohol can be a reason to blame that. And so us as society, we said that's wrong just because a few people can do it it, there's this travesty because we're allowing it to happen. And so they Ill, they outlawed, obviously, drinking and driving. And I think you see a similar situation here with Kyle Larson's and the Jeff Gordons and, and, and the Kofoids and these other guys who are young and are, are performing well in full-size sprint cars. These are the few people who could drive when they're drunk. But overall, overall, I would say we're seeing a big negative from allowing 14-year-olds in full-size race cars, super late models and wing 410 sprint car. I said, overall, I would say that we're seeing a negative of that. So I would think, once again, it's not just the ability as well. I think it's the respect of these, these vehicles that we're supposed to be marketing as professional racing vehicles. New people who come to the track, once again, when they see a 14-year-old or 16-year-old walk out of that car, the respect for that car just went from professional to kitty to elementary to high school. And that's an issue we got to work on in societal aspects and perspectives overall. Some people don't get the importance of that. I certainly do because I've studied the sport and I've studied what holds it back. And that's one of the main things. Jeff Gordon, the king that caused this issue, that's when the, the sprint car star kind of died. It was replaced with Jeff Gordon's. And that's our stars of sprint car racing ever since Jeff Gordon, Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart, Casey Kane, uh, t- uh, Tony Stewart, you know, Christopher Bell, Kyle Larson. It, it, it's no longer Kinsers and Swindells, even though we have those living and breathing right now on the dirt tracks. They don't get the same amount of attention or respect because of this scheme that was pulled, in my opinion, through the helps of Hollywood. But I think that there's a lot of arguments and a lot of uh, reasons to say that we should age limit. 410 sprint cars and super late models. Spike comes in, says, Questions should World of Outlaws create a 360 support class and use that as a series? I, I, but they actually created opportunity. I, I don't think so. Uh, the World of Outlaws Gumot series came and went. Um, somebody said, Gary V says he deleted it. I believe he's talking about Torgerson's father. He deleted it and limited who can comment. I, saw, I just went to it a minute ago. It did look like the comments were limited to who could comment on the post. Um, let's see here, going back. Holy crap, that response from Torgerson is unbelievably embarrassing. No wonder the kid drives with zero respect when that is the clown who he, who is, who is, when that is the clown is who raised him, or I would say who has raised him is, is the better way to, to write that sentence out. Uh, Cali Dirt video shows footage from opposite side of the track, uh, stay in micros, the kid that needed that weird press conference to announce that he was alive after the ejecto Cito accident, DeMar Hamlin style. That's an unfair or fair comparison. I don't know. I don't know. It did seem like they did ride that out a lot, even though they wanted to fight me because I talked about it. Um, seems strange that they 
have series on a tro- on the trophy below high limit racing. Okay, back to the trophy. Been saying that for years. Sean, parents on Facebook having their nine year old kid in a pure stock, unbelievable. Yeah, that's not cool. I know there's a 12 year old out there in late model racing right now, number 555 car, and they're trying to build it up as this great big giant thing that he's racing super late models. And and no disrespect to the kid or the family, keep the shit in 604s, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. I believe that for the respect of the sport, that has to change. Um, let's go down here a little bit more. Uh, Jordan says Garcia is lucky. Roger said throttle pedal works both ways. Uh, wow, somebody's trying to say, I guess, that Gage Garcia should have hit the brakes knowing that we're starting a race side by side. We're down the front straightaway side by side, but we're I'm, I'm going to get just put into a concrete wall. That's a bad defense uh, for the video we just watched. Um I'm a Selzy, Selzy Knight. We got Selzy Knights or Selzyites in the, um, hey, Selzy Knight kind of has a ring to it. There's other ones too. There's other ones too. Wow. Dominic Selzy was the guy who threatened you on that video. Wow. No, it was not Dominic Selzy who threatened me in a video that happened three years ago at Charlotte, the the situation I'm talking about between me and Dominic. Um, actually four years ago, 2019 at Charlotte in May, I believe. Um, let's see here. Wish some people would just appreciate the talent this man has and not just hate. I guess he's talking about Kyle. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's kind of the situation that hap- there, or happened there. Um, interesting. Uh, I don't really know what to say. I, I really don't know what to say. Um, it is just something that has developed uh, out, of, out of nowhere. Uh, we do have some more chat, super chats coming in from Larry. If you want to super chat him, I'll definitely uh, read him on the screen. Uh, the reason why uh, California is in the top tiers of 410 racing is because they started young. They crashed earlier. People were willing to invest in those kids in California and, and is now the posse. Um, not sure how that sentence. I think he's trying to say that the reason California drivers are so good is because they started racing at such a young age. Of course, they changed the age rules in California because they lost Jeff Gordon to Indianapolis. I believe California had a 16 or, or or so age restriction on being able to race. Jeff Gordon left, went to Indiana to race because I believe you could be 14 and race there. I think it's either 14 or 16, one of the two. Um, and then they changed the age rules in California so that younger drivers could stay in California and they don't lose them. And that's why Kyle Larson was able to come up at his young age. Um there is some truth to that. I do think if you get kids out there and you get them slapping and banging and wrecking race cars, uh, that gets the learning curve out of the way on what not to do. A lot of people with good funding. I mean, Jeremy Elliott and me talked about it the other day with like Anthony Macri. Anthony Macri and a lot of these good drivers that are in their 20s, they were in their teenagers, you know, just wrecking, destroying cars, making all the mistakes so that they don't make those mistakes again. It's almost like a learning process. So I get what Larry is saying. I just think that the only reason people are trying to be successful at that young of an age isn't to become a full-time sprint car racer. It is to become a NASCAR truck driver. And I think that that is the problem. This whole kid era, kid surge, was never to become full-time sprint car dirt racers. It was to use it as a stepping stone ladder to the NASCAR Cup dream that was instilled into the Sprint Car Racing Society 30 years ago with the with a driver by the name of Cole Trick I mean Kyle Lar or I mean Jeff Gordon. Even though all three of those people basically did the same thing. Regardless, all and also Tim Richmond the movie's based on is from Ohio and raced Indy cars anyway. But um at the end of the day, I think that's an issue. Um if we're trying to get sprint car racing respected as a end of the level, top of the tier professional level of motorsport, we don't need stars starting at 16 years of age. We need stars starting at the 22, 23, like other sports do, like the NFL, like the NBA, like the NHL, and like NASCAR does. That's when their stars arrive and thrive because their names have already been built on the high school levels and college levels of dirt track racing. And I say it's high school for them, and that's how they've manipulated society to view it that way because NASCAR, in their eyes, is right next to the NFL and college right below it. 
is Xfinity and trucks, and high school below that is dirt track racing, short track asphalt racing. It's a part of the marketing scheme that they put onto society, and that's the biggest difference between local racing back in the day versus in today's society, is local racing back in the day didn't have this uh, stepping ladder system, especially in, in short track open wheel. Um, and local newspapers and things would, you know, write up about local racing, about professional auto racing. The only time newspapers pay attention now is when it's one of these 14 year olds and it's only to step them to the next level. So if we want it to become professional, then we should put age restrictions on 410s and, and, and super late models, in my opinion, because then you're also saying you're not going to get to you're not going to peak as a star until you get to this certain amount of age and maturity. So when you walk out of these race cars, you're viewed as a young star. You're not just forced in there or in there because you can't afford it. I mean, did Torgerson really go through a ringer? Did Torgerson destroy and mop the floor with all of the micro sprint car competition on the West Coast in Arizona? Did he destroy everyone? Did he mop the floor with this lower level of dirt track racing where kids are supposed to learn how to drive? Or did he get some experience and just move up because they had the money to? So there's another aspect in restricting younger people into next level cars is they're not Kyle Larson talents. They're not getting Kyle Larson results. They're not getting Christopher Bell results. They're not getting Jason McDougal results. They're not getting... I'm just saying, in the micro levels, these other guys, they were waxing the damn fields before they moved up into sprint car racing. Kyle Larson in the outlaw cart, waxing fields, him and Justin Grant, and then they moved up. The problem in today's society is people would, would rather buy their fame than actually earn their fame, at least in a small way. Kyle Larson earned his fame, his shots, and other opportunities because he was winning. And now since everybody's trying to be Kyle... They're trying to buy their way to be Kyle. They're not necessarily trying to be Kyle with skills and results. They're trying to be Kyle with flash, fame, and position in society. So that's just another reason to age restrict these premier divisions of, of dirt track racing. These premier divisions should have age restrictions. Because even though, once again, we got a few drunk people who could drive cars at a young age, the majority of the people who drive drunk wreck, cause accidents, just murder people, technically. And, and, and that's kind of what's being alluded to here in this dominant salesy post. It's going to get somebody killed, these young drivers racing with no respect. And how do you earn respect when more than likely you're, on, you're in these race cars from a very wealthy family, in one way or another. I mean, micros ain't cheap anymore either. I mean, they're $40,000 cash. You know, there's no financing these race cars. It's not like a regular person can come come over and put 10000 down or 5000 down on a racing operation and get a, a, a million-dollar setup. So are these kids getting any respect by coming up in a privileged lifestyle and then, and then getting everything handed to them without the results on the racetrack? Where are they learning respect? They're, they're earning everything without the, without having to earn it. So, I mean, just a little bit of a different situation. Good point, Chaz. People seem to forget that Macri tore up everything on a weekly basis at one point. My point exactly. Uh, Gary said he's destroyed a lot of micros with about the same move he destroyed the Tarleton car with. And I don't want to make this a Torgetson hit job. I tried to move it over into uh, a more so overall uh, picture situation. Because it is. That's what Dominic was also trying to say. This is an overall issue. This isn't just... Torgensen, he's seen this happen a lot all year. Younger drivers just taking over front ends. And there's some older guys who didn't get called out by Dominic Selzy who are taking front ends off. You know, we see a bunch of those 23, 22, 25-year-olds who kind of got into sprint car racing at a young age trying to be the best, the pressure on the back, and they're cutting front ends off because at the end of the day, I think some of those, Kyle Larson, he don't, he don't, well, monster trucks, which I believe the Torgetsons are involved with, invo- involved with. A guy like Torgetson versus a guy like Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson, even at his younger ages, he don't pull a move off like that. And not just Torgetson, but a bunch of these other young guys who have had all this uh, influx of support and opportunity in full-size race cars, cars. 
that, that haven't whooped ass on the lower divisions and lower levels of the sport, like the micros and the outlaw carts, they're not confident in their ability to outdrive somebody. They don't have the, uh, they have it in their mind. They want to be something great, but, but they've experienced getting beat a lot. And they know that that there's been some times where the guy with the, the junky $15,000 micro has outrun me with the best of the best in the world. So they don't have the confidence. They don't believe they 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 don't have that Kyle Larson when he got out there he was whooping ass. Some of these guys were just promoted because they had the monetary ability. They don't have the confidence. So they have to pull moves off at the jump of the start. They have to cut noses off. They have to 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 get everything they can get on the racetrack, any position, any way, because I know if we get to going and we spread out, I can't. Run, I'm not good enough to run the guy down and pass him. I'm not good enough to track his ass down and win the race. So I have to cut this nose off to start the race. I have to do something, and that and, and this isn't just a young kid issue. This is older people's issue too. I think a lot of times we see. Noses and, and, and things cut off almost purposefully is from guys who know that they don't have the driver ability to beat the other guy fair and square. So they have to pull something off to get an advantage on the racetrack. And that's exactly, I mean, I would say that that's exactly what happened there. What are you doing? Closing off the top side line on a side-by-side start to a heat race. You're saying that you need the advantage from the get-go. You're saying that you can't let that first corner go by and one guy have a line and you have your line and and go down the back straight away and beat him. That shows insecurity in your ability on the racetrack. And I think that that's an issue with everybody trying to be a cow, like like he said, like, like, like Dominic said, everybody trying to be a cow. So they got all this pressure and they have to win. And I think some of these people with the monetary situations and thing, things like that, they've experienced losing. Kyle Larson didn't experience a lot of losses or getting tracked down and passed or watching a guy in front of him get smaller and smaller. He was used to them getting bigger and bigger. So he don't have to worry about winning it on the first lap because he has he has the confidence in his ability to beat him over 8 or 30 laps. He don't have to pull that shit off. But not everybody's Kyle Larson. There's a few out there that are on Kyle's level, but they're not all Kyle Larson's. They just can't do it. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's a good one for today. We got our hour in. We got the hair fluffed. Look at this, man. Look at this. The babes hooked me up. Look at that. A peacock in the making, bull. But anyways, I got to get the horns. I gotta get the horns, like really, like I want to get it to where I can, like I don't know, wax this or something, and just come straight up and put the horns because we're laying the smack it down on this bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I got some music in the works as well. When are we getting a video of you in the salon with your woman? Oh my god, we've been talking about doing some, uh, cause I've been trying to branch out, branch out a little bit, doing different content. I've been doing the the trading card rips. A lot of young audience into that. Uh, and, and branching into new people, younger, newer people, 20s age, you know, the people we need to attract, the people who we need to take to a sprint car race and see a grown badass get out of a race car, not a 14-year-old kid. Um, been reaching out with that. And then also, we need the female audience up, guys. If you go look at YouTube, YouTube analytics is about 80-20. There's about 80% of the YouTube audience is male to begin with. There are some videos out there that take off pretty well, and it is like hairstyling and stuff like that, videos and, and all that. My videos are around the 8 to 12% female audience. Sometimes it's zero, guys. Sometimes it's zero female audience. But females love drama. I think that's why they love the chats. I think that's why my female audience is higher than David Gravel's, believe it or not. Me and him had our phones out one night, and it was like, David's, I think, was like 6, and mine was like 8 at the time. But it does it by the month. I think if we did all year, David would be a little bit higher. You would think David... With his with his pretty teeth and his eyes, and 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 you know, girls like pugs, little bitty animals, short little people. You know, you think that his his female audience would be out the roof in compared to me, but me with the hair, with the drama, with the fun, with the personality. I beat him every time. 
beat them every time. No, I'm just playing, David. I think I think it'll be uh, interesting to try to potentially do some salon hair videos. What do you think of that? Hmm? Hmm? Branch out. Branch out. Uh, we'll check the chat real quick. Nothing's going to happen. But I do want to say thanks for the super chats from Larry uh, and, and uh, Spike as well. Although I think the World of Outlaw series should not create a 360 support class at all. Um, I almost wanted to do an exit video on um, the history of the Israeli-Palestine conflict. Because everybody's freaking out over this. Everybody is freaking out. And I feel like it's almost a duty to show my audience like some history of the situation. But I'm just going to um, invite y'all to go over here and watch this video. Uh, if you go look it up, it's called History of the Israeli or Israel-Palestine Conflict. Some people are completely confused. They have no idea about the region, the history, or nothing like that. This is a 10-minute video. It's on History of Maps. It's really good. It's really informative. I know everybody's freaking out. I know the whole notion of Jews around the world is is scaring everyone right now because the relationship between Israel and America has been uh, creepily controlling over the last 40, 50 years. Also, when you go and watch this, keep in mind the time tracks, all that uh, that we have going on there with the Israel-Palestine conflict. Keep in mind, you know, Rambo three and the Mujahideen, how we were buddies in a certain time period when the Soviets were involved. And everything. This is a real big deal. But just just to maybe put everyone at ease just a little bit, uh, 2021, and, and I would show it if this uh, Zen commercial would, would go on by. Zen, kind of what I use to cure the nicotine addiction. But there was a actual battle in Israel. I know everybody's freaking out. It's the end of the world. We're going to war. This picture right here is at 2021. It's at the end of the video. This shows you that in 2021, two years ago, there was battling in Israel. There was a fight between Hamas, which is this little country to the left, and the Israel, Palestinian. It's a very interesting way how the different colors on the map judge different territories. But my point here is everybody freaking out and saying biblical prophecy is coming to the end because this is kind of what they said, and the saints are going to sing loud at the end of times. That's kind of what North, Richmond, North of Richmond was a saint, you could say it. Um this war in Israel has already happened. So don't let the TV screens fool you or scare you. And also for those who are listening to Fox News, I heard them talk about the $6 billion uh, that they were giving Iran. Biden was doing unfroze that money. That money was already held and froze. Um, they have refroze that money. So that money is no longer going to Iran for those who need to know and have listened to your political stations and they've psychologically put you into a trance of some kind because that's basically what they their job is to do um is to put you in a trance and to have you uh, battle on tri uh, tribalistic uh, ideologies but anyways good video here if you want to know more about the history of the land the area it is very important it is very biblical it is very um interesting and whatever you do do not look up how israel controls america do not look up how israel controls america my God, do we do it? Do we do it? Oh, here comes the rab rabbit hole. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my. Oh, oh we got we got to stop it. There's a. Oh, no. 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 Back to the chat. I don't have time for that rabbit hole, guys. I don't have time for that rabbit hole. I don't. Uh, eight. AF, AJ Foyt, Mario Andretti kicked everyone's butt and were even uh, given NASCAR and Indy rides, and it was Jimmy Clark won the Indy 500 as a rookie. Go, Kyle. I think it's possible. And Spike Fast Racing says sprint car racing should allow Apple Eye watches to monitor the heart rate of those obese racers, such as Dominic Selzy. Oh, my God. That is the comment of the show. That is the comment of the show. Watches approved and needed heart rate monitors we don't need drivers having heart attacks on the racetrack uh torgerson's got a point there if they're old obese overweight if a driver is racing a full-blown 900 horsepower sprint car and you have a heart attack during the race that's bad who knows what kind of wreck could happen then falls crashes out wide open flings off the racetrack into the stands 
So I think Kyle was trying to give us a little symbolism of what needs to happen with his watch. We need heart rate monitors in sprint car racing, all forms of, of dirt racing to protect young superstar up and coming Kyle Larson's from the old farts like Dominic Selzy and Lance Dewey's mandatory heart rate monitors. Mandatory. That's great. That's gold. That is gold. How about monitoring them when thrown from the car? Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, well, it looks like we got some uh, text messages. We're getting th death threats, potentially. Um, yeah, this is turning bad. This is turning bad. We cannot talk about the powers that be in the world. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. Just over a little bit of an hour of a show. Go check that Israel-Palestine video out. We got some content coming here very, very soon. So y'all pay attention. It's coming. Once again, these lives are still happening Monday through Friday every day at noon. We may pull off some randoms in a conversation interviews. And Broke Joe, by the way, for those for you get out of here, Broke Joe is livid at my apology yesterday video saying sorry for Joe. Joe called me up. He is absolutely livid that somebody contacted me and was upset at what he had to say. He wants everyone to know he's coming with facts. And if you can disprove him, come and prove him differently. But apparently, Joe is putting a bullet board, bulletin board, a table of contents of everything that he has seen done wrong. And he wants us to go through everything done wrong and put it out there for everyone to see. To see why he feels the way he does. He's not just making it up or being grumpy, he says. He says, here's bullshit. And I'm saying something about the bullshit where everybody else is quiet because they're just playing with each other. It's a game to them. It's a hobby. Joe's pissed, though. Joe is absolutely pissed. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. Uh, like the video. Comment below. Uh, join the membership button somewhere around here. That would be helpful. I think it's like $2 a month. Keep the shows going. If you want to see your name at the uh, top right of the screen left on your side, uh, send us a message or PayPal and Venmo links in the description below. Definitely helps out a lot. And also, long live the Chaz. We ain't wearing hats today. We got one right here. Flex fit. Gold, camo, original black, gold, and white. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, be sure to subscribe. Noonish tomorrow. We'll catch you then. Be safe. And calm down about Israel. Ain't a big deal.